that's right that's right spread love everybody spread love and welcome welcome to another edition of maryland's cafe society radio right here on the youtube channel well it's tuesday another tuesday it's the 13th day of december 2022 you know what it's actually 12 days away from christmas day and it's on a weekend this year so man just enjoy everybody enjoy by the way have you been busy with the busyness of the season you know the decorating the decking the halls and more importantly just reflecting on the true reason for the season just kind of slow slowing down a bit and just taking it all in you know your family we we we're uh, approaching the endemic, although, you know, they we got this triple threat now with the COVID, the flu and um, what is it, the RSV. Uh, so but but nevertheless, you know, we have a lot to be thankful for and to reflect reflecting on and, you know, just uh, appreciating every day, every moment that we have uh, with our families and everything. But getting back to the decorating and decking the halls, I've, I've taken some time uh, today, this morning and last night, you know, putting up a few things, just kind of getting the spirit. I was in um, Home Depot uh, yesterday, I believe, earlier this week, um, maybe over the weekend, and picked up... Um, a couple of poinsettias, you know, just to kind of get that, that, you know, the poinsettia really made me think about my mom because she would decorate the house with them during this time of year. And so I got some and, you know, just feeling a little um, melancholy, but it's going to be okay. It is. It is okay. It's already okay. All right, everybody. Well, let's go ahead and, and get the show started. Now, I do want to um get you thinking about cafe talk we're going to do that a little bit later in the show but here's the question have you or will you attend an office corporate holiday christmas party yeah i know we're you know, as i just said we're 12 days away so some of those um parties may have already happened but um you know just chime in think about it and let us know when we of course get the show posted all right so let's go ahead and dwell into our cafe news and um here's one story that caught my eye because i've just been enjoying the lower prices of the gas have you noticed that at the gas pump that here in in the chicago region we actually dipped for just regular unleaded gas we we've dipped under three dollars a gallon oh my god it feels so good but this story caught my attention because you know we've kind of been celebrating um the fact that we're getting more gas for our dollar now so according to the associated press the keystone oil pipeline leaked Oh, they're saying more than about 14,000 barrels of oil in Kansas just last week. Now, um, it's reportedly the largest spill in the pipeline's history. And they don't even know, it's not even clear when TC Energy, which is the uh, pipeline's operator, will be able to get it back up and running um, after having to shut it down because of that leak. Now, Bloomberg has reported that in totality since 2010, and this is including this latest leak, that the Keystone pipeline has leaked more crude oil onto the United States land than any other pipeline. Yes, yes. The, um, uh, it's reported that it's about 26,000 barrels that has leaked since 2010. Man, just imagine what we could do with, with, with that oil. That would bring down the prices some more. But anyway, nevertheless, it's, um, it's still, um, they're saying it's still an important conduit for oil for uh, the United States. And, and prayerfully, this snafu will, will not result in another rise in the cost of gas. I mean, you know, uh, it, it really feels good to, to be getting more gas for 
our buck these days. So stay tuned, everybody. We'll follow this and see how things develop. Well, if, if you're like me and you love AM radio, don't buy an electric car. Why, you ask? Well, apparently electric cars and AM radio don't mix well. Yeah, the uh, New York Times reported that many electrical vehicle manufacturers are removing AM radio from their vehicles because of electromagnetic interference that causes noise and static in the broadcast. Now, Tesla, Volvo, Porsche, um, Audi, and some Volkswagen electronic vehicles or electric vehicles, I should say, have already come um, or been manufactured without the AM radio. It's further reported that technological solutions to make electric vehicles and AM radio compatible do exist, but because there's just 20% of the United States radio audience that listens to AM radio, these manufacturers are saying it's not worth, you know, the effort. Um, oh, and they did throw in the fact that these AM radio listeners tend to be older people. They just dis they they are just so dismissive of older people. It's a shame. But anyway, back to the story. So, so car manufacturers might not bother to accommodate a minority of the radio listeners. Yeah. The, uh, some are saying if this mindset or uh, trend continues, it might spell the end of AM radio because so many AM stations rely on the rush hour drive listeners, right? The morning drive and the afternoon drive listeners. So um, there is opportunity for AM stations to switch to FM frequencies, but because, uh, you know, uh, they're saying that the FM waves are more resistant to electromagnetic interference. And, and so, you know, it would be um, feasible if in fact AM radio is going to go away, it should be feasible for the AM stations to make that switch. But because of the cost, they're saying that uh, many of these AM stations will not be able to afford it. So what's the answer? What, what can they do here? We certainly uh, don't want to see AM radio go away. I don't. I'll explain why a bit later. But at least one senator, uh, Senator Ed Markey from Massachusetts, um, has put in a recent request that the electric vehicle automakers avoid depriving drivers of AM radio. Um, his argument is that AM radio, the AM waves must continue to exist because it plays a key role in helping government officials communicate with the public, especially during emergencies. And so he's a proponent for keeping AM radio. Now, as I said uh, moments ago, I uh, would like to see AM radio stay, a while, stay around too for nostalgic reasons because that's where I got my broadcasting career going, AM radio. Yeah, in the 90s, I, I started with WWHN radio, Chicago Land's hot choice for dusty music and and uh, then moved on over to WJOL, which was Will County's news talk and sports uh, radio. So um, AM radio uh, holds a, a, a close place in my heart. And, and not only that, but um, I grew up listening to AM radio because back in the 1970s, AM was you know pretty much the most listen to form of radio broadcasting am radio it wasn't until the late 70s early 80s that fm really became popular and started to take over um and radio broadcasting and and you know of course we can't we we cannot not mention the fact that when the transistor radio was first invented uh since its inception it's all been on the AM frequency. And so 
um, we we have to hold on to that. We really do. We just can't let the AM radio go away, everybody. <laughs> I know times change and, and we get advanced as a um, um, a culture of, of people, but AM radio has played such an important role throughout history. And, you know, as the um, senator from Massachusetts says, you know, we, we need it for for communication purposes with with the government, particularly during emergency. So let's let's um, keep our fingers crossed and hope that this is just, you know, just, you know, some forecasting that may not necessarily be factual. OK, all right. And speaking of electric vehicles, Tesla founder owner Elon Musk has once again slipped to the number two spot on the Forbes real-time billionaires list. Now, this is all according to Forbes. They said on Monday, he fell second once again to Bernard Arnault of the French luxury conglomerate, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy. And again, this was the second time this happened to him in one week now. He has, and that is Elon Musk, has also made news in more ways than one in the last few days. Yeah, um, we just read what today he announced that um, he has dissolved Twitter's Trust and Safety Council, uh, the advisory group that provides expertise and guidance on how the platform could better combat hate and harassment. Well, it turns out it was just a volunteer group that really had no decision making authority, but you know, it kind of took folks over at Twitter by surprise once again. And so uh, that council had no longer exists and everybody's kind of waiting to see where he's gonna go with um, how he uh, manages hate and harassment on the Twitter, on the social media platform. You know, we know that he's a, a strong proponent for um, free speech and, and all of that, but there still needs to be uh, you know, the police, the Twitter police out there kind of monitoring things and make making sure that people don't cross the line, so to speak. All right. All right. And so um, and then, you know, the last story that that he appeared in and it was reported, I, I forget the media outlet, but they have been reporting that he was booed. Elon Musk was booed at a Dave Chappelle show in San Francisco, California. Yeah, Dave Chappelle apparently or reportedly called him on stage, invited him to come on stage and introduced him as the world's richest person. And he was met with boos. Now, of course, Elon Musk went to Twitter and said that he he heard a few boos but the cheers out outweighed the boos but nevertheless it made news that he gotten some boos and dave chappelle uh reportedly tried to make light of of the situation by saying in quotes it appears some of those people that you fired are in the audience tonight and of course he got a few chuckles out of that but um yeah just uh just a weird situation there for elon musk but you know he has been on the social media kind of going against the grain with with some of his thoughts and and comments and you know there's a lot of people social media is the place now where people go to to vent and express um how they feel about things and and so you know obviously there's disagreements and there's people who follow him who don't agree with everything he says and who might just happen to be at a Dave Chappelle show. So there you have it, everybody. That's the latest news on Elon Musk. All right, and then let's just look at in other news In other news. Well, welcome home to Brittany Griner. Yeah, she's home. And that's thanks to the hard work of her wife, Sherelle Griner, who just was relentless and working with the media and government officials and many just, you know, on the social media, garnering the support of, of influential people and celebrities and entertainers and just everyday folks to get Brittany home. And so 
Um, of course, uh, she was released from Russia last Thursday in exchange. It was a prisoner exchange for notorious Russian arms dealer, Victor Brout. And of course, they flew her back to the United States on Friday morning and uh, the WNBA Phoenix Mercury basketball star was detained in February at Moscow's airport after police said they found a vape canister which contained cannabis oil in her luggage. Of course, uh, Brittany said that she had packed them by accident and had no intention of breaking the law. As a result of that, in August, she was sentenced to nine years in prison for drug possession. And in November, we all um, read the report that she had been transferred to a Russian penal colony to begin serving her sentence. And, um, it, you know, it, it really shook a lot of folks and caused folks to uh, think about uh, the American journalist Paul Whelan and all the others who have been held as political prisoners, uh, not only in Russia, but around the world. But anyway, uh, she's home now and Sherelle, her wife, took to social media on Saturday just to thank uh, the White House, the Biden administration, and a whole list of so many others who she said helped make the release happen. And she also just insisted that um, those involved with the release of Brittany continue the work so that uh, the American journalist Paul Whelan and all other U.S. citizens who are being held captive can be released as well and so again welcome home Brittany all right and then um just one more story actually a couple more stories here um the 80th golden globes nominations were announced on yesterday and the banshees of Anna Sharon got the most nods followed by everything everywhere all at once now over in the world of tv abc's hit sitcom and one of my favorite shows Abbott Elementary picked up five nods and of course uh, the Golden Globes is returning to television on Tuesday January 10th 2023 um, after being off the air last year remember this it, 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 it's a vague memory but uh, but they they weren't televised last year nbc actually refused to air it because of an investigation and to the awards voting body and you know of course that's the hollywood foreign press association and so now they'll be back on television and the host will be jared comedian jared carmichael so yay for that right all right so i'm excited can't wait again that's january 10th that's a tuesday 2023 and then here's one last story ticketmaster is giving some of taylor swift fans another chance to buy tickets to see the singers eras tour of course this was after they botched the sales rollout uh, about a month or so ago now this lucky group is among those fans who registered as verified. Yeah, they were already contacted on Monday via email by Ticketmaster and will receive their individual invite to submit their purchase requests before December 23rd. And this is all according to a post that Ticketmaster made. Um, the invitations reportedly will be staggered based on tour dates in different cities so a sigh of relief for some of those taylor swift fans and i'm sure they they will work something out for for the others who are still kind of waiting in the wings all right and so that's it in our other news segment now let's move on into cafe talk and and while we do that i will softly play some festive holiday music since we are talking about Swarways, Swarways, Rays, and Parties, right? So, according to the Washington Post, office or corporate holiday parties, Christmas parties, are making a comeback. 
and uh, many of the uh, Fortune 500 companies that we think about and know are bringing them back, including small businesses. They, they're hosting or have already hosted in-person parties, in-person parties, and a number of the soirees almost seem to have returned to pre-pandemic numbers. Yeah, this go round, our year-end parties or Christmas parties, holiday parties, are being viewed as a, a, a wonderful opportunity, a great way for companies, corporations, um, to bring employees together in one place, you know, those hybrid workers along with the remote staffers, to get them all together after, you know, having such a challenging last few years and um, I guess it's been working now for some who work from home this will be their first in-person introduction to their colleagues and bosses so it's just um, a great thing now so far I have uh, talked to a few people who've already attended these holiday affairs and they're saying it was pretty pretty normal you had some people who still wanted to wear their face mask but folks dressed up and um, just really had a great time now there are some not many but there are some companies who will not be celebrating because listen um in, in just the past few weeks they've been concerned about some of the news reports about this uh, cold weather coronavirus surge, not to mention the flu and the RSV um, bug that's out there as well. And so uh, those reports have caused some of the companies to scrap their holiday party plans um, and, you know, uh, just cancel them all together. Now, uh, other companies or corporations have um, decided not to have their year-end parties because of um, economic concerns. You know, they had to cut budgets, they had to release people, lay off folks. And so they just did not think it was appropriate to have this big year-end party. And then lastly, there have been just a few companies who said we'll continue having our Christmas parties as we did during the pandemic, and that is virtually. So, so some are having virtual get togethers. I'm actually gonna be attending some of them in, in the next week or so. And so, um, you know, there you have it. But what I wanna know is have you or will you attend an in-person office or corporate holiday Christmas party? Just want to know, will you? And then if you are planning to attend or if you did attend, did you mask up? You know, uh, was there some social distancing? Was there a limit in the number of people who could be in attendance? So just kind of let me know how that experience was for you. And again, if you um, plan to attend, will you be wearing your mask, especially with the latest report on uh, the resurgence of the coronavirus along with the flu bug and this RSV? I'd love to know. And like I said, so far, I am going to be attending a couple of virtual parties, but no in-person parties. My scheduling, yeah, it's, it's, it's really my scheduling. I just have not been able to work it in. All right, everybody. And so that's it. Remember, we're keeping it short because we are in holiday mode and I know everybody's busy doing their thing. And so before we go, I do want to just remind you of our December word that we're going to be meditating on throughout the month. And that word is in spirit and spirit. And it means to encourage and to enliven someone and spirit encourage and enliven someone all right and before we go we do have to announce pick and announce our december winner for 
the countdown to Christmas giveaway. All right, I'm shaking it up here and I'm just gonna pull a name, pick a name, pick a name. Let's see, who is it this go round? Drum roll, please. Let's see. Yeah, this is exciting. Yeah, I um the other pool the other times I just already had it pulled and did and just opened it up. This time I shook up the can and pulled. All right, oh, all right. This is the winner is Tramel W. Tramel W of Chicago, Illinois. Congratulations to you. All right. So all of our winners, you will be getting your um, gift bag giveaway or gift box in some cases uh, this week by the end of this week so that you'll have it um, under your tree for Christmas all right all right and so um, having said that we still have opportunity for any um, business that might want to participate in the giveaway I'm, you know last minute is fine with me just shoot an email to producer at Maryland's Cafe Society .com. And uh, we'll definitely take your contribution to these gift bag giveaways. Do it quickly, though. Producer at Maryland's Cafe Society .com. All right. And once again, congratulations to all the winners in this year's gift bag giveaway. I'm excited. Um, hopefully next year, we're just going to say it, next year will be bigger and better. And some folks have been asking about my Christmas events that I do. Uh, well, you know, I haven't done anything since COVID. The last, uh, the last event I participated in for Christmas was um, in 2019, and I actually partnered with another um, group that was doing something. So um, I'm, I'm um, kind of, you know, trying to look at the forecasters and see where we're going to be. Um, next year this time with everything and prayerfully we can be back in the venue um, and I'll have some some folks on board to do some singing and Christmas caroling and all of that all right so just stay tuned stand by we'll make it happen in the meantime, between time make sure that you check out the website Maryland's Cafe Society .com. That's where you can connect with me on my social media platforms. Check out the blog. I did get a new blog up <laughs> finally. So uh, check out the blog. And of course, thank you to everyone who uh, subscribes to the YouTube channel. Be sure to like um, and share this with your friends and family. All right. And then there's the Mondays with Marilyn email club. Be sure to sign up for that. All you have to do is send a, a quick note to me via email to Marilyn's Cafe Society at yahoo.com and say, sign me up. All right. That's all it takes. Okay. So let's go ahead and tell you what love is for this week. Love is celebrating life. That's right. Love is celebrating life. So make sure that you do it. And also, if you don't do anything else this week, be sure that you live, you laugh, and you love. And as always, it's a pleasure and a privilege. And we'll see you on the next show, everybody. Peace.